It's a pleasure to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. I'm joined by Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And here on the show today, we'll talk about what it takes to get set, get ready for a great retirement. And in the 21st century, that means having a rock solid plan. We're going to talk about that with Kirk and Paul today. Plus, we'll tell you about their upcoming courses that they teach at local universities and how you can get registered. Kirk and Paul, it's great to be back with you. You know, planning for retirement, it's no longer really considered a DIY project, is it? Well, I I think, yeah. I like that. I I do like that. And there are people that are going to, you know, obviously attempt to do it themselves. And that's that's perfectly fine. I think what they're going to learn as they do it is that the things that they have leaned on and have been successful with to accumulate their wealth isn't going to give them what they want or need in retirement. Because the disconnect for a lot of people is the, the emotional relationship with money. It's, in, it's hard to tell people who are really sophisticated, well-educated, and have, been, uh, have done very well financially that you're woefully un- unprepared for retirement, but you are. Not from a financial perspective, but from an emotional and how do I manage my money perspective. Not what do I invest in. Because honestly, that is the easiest part. And that's what, why you guys are, 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 so many of you are going to be overconfident. You think it's the investment you choose that's going to drive your success. And it's not. It has very little to do with the investments you choose. And I know you're hearing us and not believing us. But I'm t- we're telling you that for most of you who have resources, and a lot of resources, you're going to way underspend what you otherwise could be spending because you're trying to do it yourself and you don't understand the variables that will impact whether you have comfort to spend, what to spend, when to spend, and how to minimize risks. Yeah, and I think, Kirk, when mistakes do happen, it's not like other DIY projects, Megan. Like some things, you know, you can have a project and it goes bad. Okay, so you just rebuild it. This is one of those projects that if you make a mistake, Oftentimes, you can't rebuild, right? There is no rebuilding besides the fact that you may be, at that point, the mistakes may have undermined any future potential. You're also older. Um, There's, you know, learning curve issues. Oftentimes, by the time you realize you make a mistake, there's no going back. So this is not like other, I would say, DIY projects. We call it there's no do-overs, right? right? You you said no rebuild, but we often reference this in, in the courses that we teach at all the all the universities that you're 75 years old and you made a mistake and what are you going to do are you going back to work the only thing you can do is significantly reduce your spending but sometimes that's not going to work if it's a health event if there's a, a cognitive impairment that you don't even know there's an issue see the one takeaway and i know paul because this is sort of his background paul's a he likes to say a recovering psychologist. So he's going to talk a lot about the chances of long-term care, the cognitive issues, the percentage of you that will have some sort of cognitive challenges, especially when it comes to mathematics as you age. He's going to give you all the statistics and everyone's going to say, that's never going to happen to me because especially us men, we think we're invincible. The The piece of this that you're, you you can and should appreciate is this is the first time you will ever do this yourself, which is plan for retirement. This is it. This is the first time you're ever going to do it. And different than as you have been accumulating your wealth and been doing it yourself, someone else has been paying you while you've been trying to do this yourself. And you made a, if you make a mistake, no big deal. Someone else is giving you a job and paying you income. Now, no one else is paying you but yourself. And this is the reason right here is why we started teaching these classes almost 10 years ago and why the Retirement Education Foundation, the charity, the nonprofit was created to provide education for particularly do-it-yourselfers to avoid these mistakes. These are seven-hour classes taught at all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can attend and get a 200-page textbook. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org. 
Glad to be here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. Kirk and Paul, tell us more about what it takes to have a successful retirement and what people will learn on the show today. Well, we're going to give a lot of statistics around people who do it themselves in retirement and share some of the challenges you're going to be confronted with that maybe you haven't considered. Paul's going to give a lot of statistics around some of the major health traps, um, traps around, look, here. here's, Paul, what is the number? It's 70% of people over the age of 70 years old have some sort of cognitive impairment. Is that is that the number? Yeah. It, yeah, but, two out of three Americans. Two out of three. Right. And we're not, and I, you know, this is, and we're going to get into this. It doesn't mean we're talking about you have to have dementia, right? We're talking about two out of three Americans have some cognitive issue that impacts them by the, you know, by, by seven years old. And as we're going to talk about a small problem, a small little minor problem in, in, in your, in your ability to think can have huge implications in your finances. Well, here's the piece that, forget forget the mistakes. Mm-hmm. Let's forget the mistakes. Let's think about if you're having trouble connecting dots. Mm-hmm. No one ever thinks it's going to happen to them, but it happens in two out of three people. Mm-hmm. Isn't it, it, it? I mean, how how arrogant are we all to think mm-hmm. that it's not going to happen to us, right? right? Very true. But, but think about this. Let's see, Let's say it's not even a mistake, but you're having trouble connecting the dots. Tell me, if you're having trouble connecting dots, what's going to give you confidence or the freedom, right, to be able to go travel, do the things you want to do when you can't totally connect all the dots? Right. We're not making this up. Two out of three people are going to have this problem. What, what do we do? Right. No, it's a great question. And, and I know where you're going to go, and we need to talk about, you know, it, it's, it, it's the problem is most of these people, most people don't want to admit it to themselves, let alone to somebody else. But most people have a sense of it. And they start making decisions because of their anxiety around it. And that's, while it may not be mistakes, at the end of the day, it's by far not the best thing for you. That's what we're going to talk about today. And in every segment, we're going to share with you, we started a charity over 10 years ago that was designed to help people navigate to and through retirement. That's the purpose of this. These courses aren't for the average person that's going to retire with $200,000. It's with people who have resources who need to build a plan to understand where the traps are. It's a seven-hour course taught at all the major universities. Um, We're streaming them live during COVID, so you can stay in the comfort of your own own home if you're concerned. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. There's much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Glad you're with us here on the show. It's the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Be sure to follow the foundation on Facebook. You can learn more about the courses that are offered. Again, you can search for Retirement Education Foundation on Facebook. Make sure you follow them for the latest and how you can be part of all that they're doing to help you get to and through retirement. Don't forget to register for the courses. The phone number to do that is 800-240-8981. Again, 800-240-8981. Or a very easy way to do it is online. Just go to retirementplanningedu.org. Talking with Kirk and Paul today about DIY projects. No, we're not talking about fixing a leaky sink or building a deck. We're talking about your retirement plan. And while I like a good DIY project, Kirk and Paul, I'm not sure I like it when it comes to my retirement. So what are some of the risks that lie ahead if we do decide to make it a do-it-yourself project. The first one that jumps out at me is, and and, and I love the response we get from it, but the first one is the do-it-yourselfer who has a spouse not at all involved in the finances. And so when when people attend the courses, the seven-hour courses, at all that, all the universities, and and we, it's a bit interactive in terms of we we pose a lot of questions and we ask for people to send uh, to to ask us questions. And one of the questions we'll often ask is, what happens if something happens to that do-it-yourselfer? And the common response we'll get is, well, I, I've made a list of where all the accounts are. I, I've I've shown my spouse where to go and what to do, as if 
somehow that is giving the spouse that hasn't touched your finances in what, 50 years? And you're going to die now at 80 years old? Like, what is that list doing for them? I mean, what, how are the, how is this helping anybody? You think it's likely they might get taken advantage of? Very much so. Very much so. If, 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 you, you, if I could throw two statistics out. Yeah, please. And, and, then, and then I want to give an example. So first of all, we're not talking about you have to have dementia to make a mistake, right? So 20% of Americans have what we call mild cognitive impairment. Mild. 40% of Americans have enough, have some cognitive challenge, maybe not significant enough to show on a test result, but, but enough that it could impact decision making. So we're talking 60% mild or less than mild that could have an impact on your decision making. And, and, and I, think of, I think of a couple I recently met. Can I just two yeah, seconds? Please. Here's a couple who he was, of course, a do-it-yourselfer. She had never managed money in her life. They had about $1.5 million about two years ago. You know how much money they have today? A half a million dollars. You know why? He lost a million dollars investing. Now, when I saw him, his response was, I got it. I came up, I have a new solution. I figured (laughs) this out, right? And she's looking at me, seriously, she's looking at me desperate. She doesn't know what to do. I shouldn't laugh. She she just, she can't confront, she's afraid to confront him. Sure. He's not going to change. He's not letting go, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know if he has cognitive impairment or not, but when I challenged him a little bit, to me, it was clear there was something problematic. Of course, he asked me, well, I, was I willing to work with them? You know, my response was, I don't like being in a boat that's sinking, right? I mean, yeah. if losing a million dollars was not enough to shake you up a little bit, there's nothing I can do. But this is not uncommon. This is not uncommon. Here's a, here's a man, big ego, yep. managing it forever, making mistakes. Look, he amassed a million and a half. He had done some things properly. Exactly. He did a great job yep. until retirement. until retirement. And he still thinks today he can do it. Their, their future is changed forever. They will never have the retirement they want. Of course not. Look, so when it comes to retirement, Paul, you bring up a lot of great points. And let, setting aside cognitive impairments and, and issues, connecting dots, and the do-it-yourself or the, who has a spouse that doesn't have anything, set all that aside. Even if you're sharp still and you have a, a pretty good un, a grasp on financial literacy, you have zero idea. I, I'm going to challenge all of you. I want you to ask yourself, when am I supposed to take money out of which accounts at what age? And how do I know if I'm going to outlive my money? What you think a 4% rule was designed for you who has a million or $2 million? Like, so you really, you, you saved a million dollars and all you're going to want to live on is $40,000 a year out of your investments. So ask yourself, when are you going to, when are you going to take social security? When and how do you take your RMDs for? required minimum distributions and what account are you taking it out of and what is your tax liabilities going to look like when you're in your mid 70s and you're forced to take money out of these accounts you've never paid tax on how do you manage that are you going to wait is your solution to wait until that moment to decide what you're going to do like there's a reason we plan and we teach in our course how to plan for 25 30 years i love when people say to me yeah but things are going to change well, of course they're going to change, but how do you know which way to pivot when they do change if you don't have a plan? Mapping out what to do, when to do, and how to do it. It's the craziest thing. You guys think that choosing investments is going to tell d- determine how well you're going to do. And by the way, it's going to determine how much you're willing to spend or not spend. So every four to seven years when we have an election, a major market event, or a pandemic or whatever it is, you're, what are you just going to stop spending? You're going to you're going to tighten down the hatches and not go on vacations or not do home improvements or not put the roof on your house. You've worked your whole lives to allow these short term market events to drive when and how you're going to spend your money. You have no plan. What's your plan? And I think people often, especially people who have kids, think, "Well, my kids will take my kids." So I was reading a study over Come the weekend. On. I was reading a study over the weekend. I, I was blown away. The percentage of children who actually are able to have the time to want to help, it, it's, it's, you know, two, two to three percent. It's nothing. At the no, end of they're the day, not. They're, Your kids they're, aren't. They're busy. They're doing their own thing. And, and who's to assume they have the abilities? Well, that's the other point, right? They're Again, in a different phase of life. They're doing what you did that's successfully, right. and maybe they're doing it successfully. That's a great point. They're just accumulating wealth. They have no idea when and how to take income from which accounts and how much you can spend and when you can spend it, when shouldn't you spend it. They have zero idea. From a healthcare perspective, they have no clue. 
right? They're busy dealing with all their kids in the travel sports and the pressure that, you know, all the travel athletics and school has put placed on them. Oh, and by the way, don't forget over 50% of the elder abuse is by your family and friends. Like, set that aside, right? So this is why the class, that's why we founded the class. That's why this nonprofit was created is to give you guys the knowledge to avoid some of these mistakes. But more important than making avoiding the mistakes, giving you the freedom to have the retirement you've earned, right? And these are seven-hour courses taught at all the major universities. We're streaming it live during covid you can register. It's $29 to attend. It's a donation to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And there's more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Stay tuned. Back with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, and it is a privilege to tell you about the courses that the Retirement Education Foundation sponsors. And these are courses you'll want to sign up for. Get your spot reserved today. They're taught, like I said, local universities, including University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. And it's your choice, either a one-day, seven- to eight-hour course or a two-day course. Either way, you're going to receive a great download of information from your instructors, helping you get that confidence you need for retirement. And you can register two ways, by phone, 800-240-8981, or online, retirementplanningedu.com. Dot org. Don't forget to like the foundation on Facebook. Just go to Retirement Education Foundation for all the latest. Now, Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about making retirement a do-it-yourself project. You say this is not advisable. DIY is great for home improvement, but not necessarily for your retirement future. Wanted to find out from the two of you, you've been doing this a while now, when you see someone attack their retirement future with this DIY mentality. Is there a correlation between that approach and elder abuse? There's no question. And there's two there's two variables that trigger this potential of elder abuse. And we should just give the statistic. It's one in five right now, Paul. One in five people over the age of 70 are victims of elder abuse. One in five, and that's what is reported. We know, we are confident, I should say, that it's much greater than that. But because people don't want to give up control of their own money. They don't even report half the time that they get their victims. They may not even know. They may not even know. That's a whole different discussion, right? And we know $36 billion last year was lost to elder abuse. That's about $43,000 for every person over the age of 70. It's a huge problem. In addition, over 50% of the elder abuse is being perpetrated by those closest to you, your friends and your family. And so the correlate here's the correlation. One is if you are a DIYer, do it yourself, or that's because you either have a big ego or you have and you're overconfident in your ability to understand what is involved in retirement planning. It's an income tax risk mitigation plan and not a grow your money plan. We'll get into that later. So you're either arrogant and you're overconfident. You either have so much anxiety about not knowing who to trust. There's too much information, conflicting information. So you shut it down and just decide, I'm going to do it myself. I think more people fall in that category. You're uh, you're misinformed or you've been taken advantage of by someone in the past. These are all reasons you tend to do it yourself. Now, here's what's going to happen, unfortunately. For some of you, we know a major percent of you, you're going to have cognitive impairment as you get older. You're going to have trouble managing your finances, and this is leads people to becoming victims of elder abuse. That's the first segment, right? The second segment is even if you do everything right, you DIYers, you do it right, you're leaving a spouse that hasn't touched the finances maybe ever in their lifetime. What do you think is going to happen to this spouse at 80 years old when you die? What, what are they going to do? They have a lot of decisions to make. It's a lot. Yeah. And you know, you you mentioned the correlation between cognitive issues and being taken advantage of, which is huge. But there is another variable to being taken advantage of, which happens a lot with when a spouse passes away, isolation and depression. 
Oh yeah. A lot of people who are ta- are exploited. A lot of older adults are exploited. Are exploited because they're isolated and they're depressed. Now, what happens if you're married and a spouse passes away? Most likely, your risk of depression and isolation go up significantly. That is at the greatest point where your risk is at the highest of being exploited. You've just lost, and if, this even is even worse if you weren't the person managing the money. So if your spouse was the one taking care of the bills and taking care of the investments and doing the planning for you, they pass away. Not only do you not have the skills, the knowledge, or information, you're depressed, isolated. You are prey to perpetrators, right? You are a target to perpetrators, and this is, and we see it all. It happens a lot. The data is overwhelming. It, it is, and everyone. I, I love the response. When I start having problems or I start having health issues, I, I, I'll find somebody to help to make sure my spouse is taken care of. That is insane. You don't wait to plan, right? You you, you never wait to plan because. Can you tell me when you're going to die? Can you tell me when you're going to have a cognitive issue? You know, people it, it's think sort it's of like, never going to happen to them. It's They're sort, insane. It's sort of like a person who says, I'll give you my keys when I can no longer drive. Sure you will. We have a different father. My father had dementia. Same mother, Same mother, different father. He he couldn't drive. Do you think he handed me his keys? No. In well, fact, we, we have, we, go ahead. In fact, he, he was for years furious because he said, oh, I can drive. Oh, I can drive. He almost killed somebody. He can't. He, People don't have the insight at that point to be able to say, here, t- take my key- keys. We have a mom right now that's just refusing to give up her keys. Right. I know. Right. We're not going to get into that discussion today. Yes. Because <laughs> that's that's a you, – but, but you're right. I you're, tried. I tried I know, even tricking her. I, know, I bought her a car for a couple of years with a deal that she'd give the and keys. And it scares me. I it know. scares me. Because you know what? Whoever – I mean, honestly, do you want to admit to yourself when you can't do something? No. You're proud. You've been competent all, your whole life. It's, it's not, it doesn't make you a bad person. People don't want to admit when they can't do things. Paul, you're a psychologist. Those who do it themselves tend to be people who like to be in control. I'm one of those. I'm not accusing anyone because I'm, I'm guilty of it. When you're starting to lose control over anything cognitively, you think you're, the first thing you're going to want to do is voluntarily give up control over anything? <laughs> it's the opposite. No. It's the opposite. Right? You're the, the psychologist. Oppo- yeah, it's the opposite. You're going to want to control the things that, you, that are at your fingertips, and money's going to be one of them, and that's when you get into trouble. Well, that's when we have the Jamaican lottery scam. We've seen it right. all, right? right. I right. mean, in fact, in our private practices, we, we host these events just for our clients. They're educational event, events called Lunch and Learns and Dinner and Learns. It's three hours a quarter to continue the educational process, and one of the people we bring in is the Secret Service to talk about elder abuse and identity theft because it's a massive problem. And you guys, you can't wait to plan. And this is why the course was designed to help you to construct your own retirement plan, summarize everything so that when one spouse predeceases the other, that surviving spouse knows exactly what to do, when to do it, where the money's coming from. If there's a health event, where does it come from? How do I get my income every year? How do I minimize my taxes for 30 years? That's what we're teaching the class, a full 30-year plan. Every account, every year, taxes summarized step by step. This is not just choosing investments, the easiest part of what we do in our private practices. If you'd like to register for one of our classes that are taught at all the major universities and streaming now because of COVID, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call. 800-240-8981. Much more with Kirk and Paul right after this. Glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, and it's always a pleasure to be in the studio with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And if you haven't signed up for one of the foundation's upcoming courses, well, you owe it to yourself to do just that. And we have two easy ways to do it. You can call 800-240-8981 or reserve your space today before spaces fill up at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Dot O-R-G. And don't forget, these are taught at local universities, either a one-day or two-day course. It's your choice. University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, or Oakland University. We've been talking about making retirement a DIY project. According to Kirk and Paul, 
It's not something you probably want to do. And Kirk and Paul, you say there are actually some behaviors, some things we do that could make DIY planning especially problematic. What are those things? I think it's something, Megan, that I mentioned or Paul mentions, one of us mentions every single radio show we do, is that your relationship with money is going to evolve. You don't know it yet, but it's going to evolve. You will never, ever be more vulnerable financially than when you retire and you are dependent on your own money to pay you a paycheck every single month. And when you are in this more vulnerable position, you tend to make more decisions based upon anxiety, fear, and emotions. And this is incredibly problematic. This isn't something we're making up. We just got tons of data from the COVID crisis, as we're calling it, the pandemic, of behavior of people over the age of 65. And here's the statistic Fidelity shared of all of their, now they're, remember, they're responsible for $7 trillion of customers' monies, Fidelity is. And they, studied. They looked at everybody over the age of 65. And what they found is if you were over 65 years old, 35% of the people panicked in March after the COVID crash. They panicked in March. 35% went to cash. Paul, that is a totally irrational behavior that is different. And that's why I say their relationship with money's changed because most of those same people didn't panic in 2008. And they didn't panic in 2002. And they make the mistake every time I, we, we, they come to our classes, they, they wear it like a badge of honor that I was a disciplined investor. I didn't panic. Well, of course you didn't panic. Someone else was paying you a paycheck every month. Why would you, why would you panic? Someone else was paying you. Once you no longer have somebody paying you and you are paying yourself and you really don't have a comprehensive plan. You have some garbage, sorry, the financial service industry, some spreadsheet that told you to take 4% a year out. That isn't going to give you the peace of mind you're looking for to not panic. Kirk, I, I, I think you need to finish. So you, you made the comment 35% people went out of the market, right? Yep. We need to finish that, right? So, so I'm listening saying, okay, so how is that a bad thing? That means they weren't in. They, they took the brunt of the loss. They weren't in for what is the greatest bull run I think we've ever had in history where people are now up, up a lot from the, 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 from the COVID crash. Right, right. They were ahead of where they started, right. way ahead from where they started. And these All they had to do is not panic. And these same people will tell you, oh, I'll get back in when it's the right time. <laughs> yeah, right? When's that? I, and we know from experience that most likely they'll never get back in the market. Five years later, they're going to ha still have the money sitting in cash, right? And it's all because, understand, so listen, we're not being critical of you. If you're one of those people, we're not being critical. It's, it's sort of human nature, right? You, this is not what you do. It's your money. You're, you know, this is, this is what you have for the future. It's hard not to be emotional. It's hard not to manage your fear and anxiety. That's why. Doing yourself comes with significant risk. That's why we're doing the show. And, and we're, remember, we're speaking from the foundation, the nonprofit, the educational foundation. That's what the, we do is educate the consumer. And we have all the data. And it's not just our data. It's Wharton School of Business. It's Yale. It's Harvard. We can give you the statistics. Your relationship with money is going to change. You're going to be more vulnerable and therefore make a lot of decisions based what you spend will base, be based upon your emotions and how the market's doing. When you spend it will be based upon sometimes who's being elected or who's being impeached, right? There's all these emotional triggers that are going to drive your decisions that has nothing to do with investing. You, you he, Here's the other point, Paul. Ready? I, 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 go. Go ahead. I lost my point. I, 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 I got to be careful. I don't want to offend people. Right. No, I, I, actually, as you're, as, you're, as you're speaking, I'm thinking that. Yeah. And, and I guess one thing I just want to add to this, it, it's the mistakes aren't always necessarily spending more than you can afford. I'll tell you, it's an, the opposite. an equally or maybe worse mistake is you don't spend what you can afford because you don't know any better because of your emotions. And now you've lived your life. You've worked very hard. You've accumulated a lot of wealth. And because of fear, anxiety, because no one has helped you understand this, you're not spending what you can. And, and, and then you don't do the things you want to do in your retirement. That, to me, that's tragic. So here's the problem. Everyone hear us. Every time you read a book, an article, someone's telling you a rule, a general rule. 
they are talking to the average baby boomer. And you need to, to be able to understand what the average baby boomer is. For most of you, it's not you. The average baby boomer is going to retire with $200,000 saved for retirement. That's all. That's everything they have. Now, for some of you, that may sound like a lot. Many of you listening to our show, that that's you've got a lot more than that, right? And so when you're trying to apply these general one-size-fits-all rules as an average because you think you're average, it's going to fail you. You're going to way underlive what you otherwise could be spending. And one of the reasons why, Paul, again, your behavior, your relationship with money needs to change. And remember this. We'll come back to this next segment. You have to switch from you serving money to allowing money to serve you. And once you realize what that is and what that means, and we spend a lot of time in the class talking about how do we let money serve us so we can have the freedom we're looking for in retirement. This is a major variable to what we see people who have retirements with freedom, enjoying themselves and doing the things they want to do versus people living retirement with anxiety, always worried about living them. Look, old people aren't cheap, Paul. They're scared. They're scared because they try to do it themselves and they don't have a plan. Do yourself a favor. Come to the foundation, the charities, educational courses that are taught at U of M, taught at EMU taught at MSU, they're taught at Oakland University. We're also teaching them at our learning center in Livonia. We're streaming them during COVID. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You get a 200 page textbook, seven hours of education. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Stick around, there's much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Glad you're with us on the show today. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, alongside the financial instructors from the Retirement Education Foundation, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. If you'd like to get registered for one of their courses, you can reserve your spot today. And remember, they're taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland. And it's your choice. You can attend a one-day course or a two-day course. Call today, 800-240-8981, or you can register online, retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk and Paul, we've talked about how money can serve you or you can serve your money. Let's talk about how that applies when we're discussing a DIY approach to retirement. Megan, that was really good. <laughs> it's exactly right. And I, it, this may be a foreign concept to some people, but it's a really important concept to successfully have the retirement you've earned, right? I mean, look, you've saved lots of money. Some of you saved quite a bit of money. Uh, you are likely not the average. We've established the average baby boomer is going to retire with less than $200,000 saved for retirement. So if you have more than that, you've done better than the averages and you've done it by serving money, right? You've spent your entire life trying to accumulate your wealth. Your focus has been saving to put your kids through school, to raise your kids, to have enough money for retirement, to pay your bills. Everything's been about saving, growing, and serving money. Once you retire, you're done serving money. Like that ship has sailed. You can no longer serve the money. It now needs to serve you, right? No one else is going to pay you. Now you've, th this is why you've served your money your whole life. Now you've got to let that money serve you. And if you are able to accomplish being able to let money truly serve you, then you will have a different retirement than many others who don't figure this out have. Right. Totally. And when you say the ship has sailed, yep. I think to, to clarify at some point, and you say this often in classes, at some point that you can't move the needle up or down much. Right. At some point, you you know, it, it, there's not much you're going to do that's going to impact the long term retirement amount of money you have. This is the disconnect, Paul, right? You, you nailed it. So, so you do it yourself. I know it's, it's the focus on growing your money. And so you're thinking the mutual fund or the investment you select is what's going to drive your success from retirement. Look, here's the saying. You have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. So first you need to determine, do you have what you need to give you the retirement you want? 
right? And if the answer to that, see, none of you, let me say none, few of you really know that. So you continue to try to pick the best investments and without building a plan and knowing what's best for your plan. See, it's an income plan, Paul. It's how and when you take income from which accounts. So we've got, go back to our last show. I think we talked about sequence of return risks. They're all out there on podcasts. Thank you. Holy cow. (laughs) SoundCloud and podcasts. Wow. So go listen to sequence of return risk. This is a major problem for do it, do it yourselfers, right? You're not understanding the order of which you take your income from which accounts is going to drive performance, success, not the mutual funds. Right. And the sad truth is, is that most people don't believe that. And most do it yourselfers don't believe that. And that's not what they're focusing on, right? They're focusing on rates of return, right? They're focusing on picking the right stock, going in and out of the market at the right time, right? I mean, this it makes no difference. That ship has sailed. They've done but, they've 40 years of investing. But think of the, but Kurt, think of the, the average person who is a do it yourselfer. Yeah. Part they 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 love the thrill. Yeah. They think they're really smart. Well, that's right? how industries convince them. That's what drives that's what, success. Ex- exactly, and 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 that goes back to the person who lost a lot of money, right? Lost a lot of money because he's playing a game because someone told him this is the game you need to play. At the end of the day, he already had enough. He won the marathon. He, he won. won. I mean, how sad! He won the marathon. He could have the best, really, the best run of his life, and now not going to have a good run at all. No, you can't move the needle that much anymore. You are. That Paul said it. The ship has sailed. So that that's the key question. Do you have what you need? If you have what you need, then your risk your it should be goal driven. Everything now moving forward should be. If you're within five to ten years of retirement, should be goal driven. What do I need to give me what I want for the rest of my life? Right. And and and, and what I what I what I, I mean again I th- I think that the greatest risk for most people is if they can't answer that question. What they end up doing is they it makes sense because they don't know. They just don't spend a lot, right? They penny pinch, right? I, I'm going to spend a little just because I don't want to ever run out of money. And then they pass away with huge sums of money. Greatest transfer of wealth. Which the kids love, yep. but, 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 you know, the reti- Ready? Here's the question. Do it yourself first. All you do it yourself first. I know you listen, engineers, executives, CPAs, CFOs, really sharp people. They're all coming to our classes. We know. We know who you are. Tell, answer this question. When will you have enough? What's the number? I know some of you have these fictitious, these like goals you've set. You know, I met someone the other day. Originally, their goal was $3 million. Then, and now they're over, they're, they're worth $5.2 million. He's 63 years <laughs> old, right? He's like, now it's, it's, it's $7 million. That's right. what he said to me. I said, why? Right. Well, I don't, I, because, because they know, there's nothing magical that's going to happen. Literally, there's no light above your bed that's going to alarm, that's going to say, you've got enough to retire now, you're okay, and guess what, you can spend this much. God isn't going to, my children, you have enough to retire, and this is how much you can spend. It doesn't exist, right? Did so, you really just say all uh, that? Yes. Uh, they're serving it. money. They <laughs> don't understand. They really don't, because it's I what agree. our industry pumps them. Like, right. Like people, these managers have secret sauces and algorithms to give them something more than they, they, half of you already won. You guys have already won. You just need to know how to take the money out to live on and how much you can take and when's the most efficient way to take it. That's what you need to know. But you guys are, anxiety. People are frozen. There's so much confusing information out there. They're frozen, Paul. That's why the class is so important, right? Right. It helps. It's part of the reason we it started this over 10 years ago. The nonprofit was created to help you filter a lot of the noise, to know how to construct, to teach you how to construct a full retirement plan. What takes us in our private practice 30 to 50 hours to build. We're going to walk you through what it looks like. How do you choose an advisor? How do you, how much you should be paying? What's important, when it's important, where the traps are and what's the statistics so you're informed, so you can filter this noise. We're teaching these classes at all the major universities. They're seven hours in length taught in two days, two evenings or one full day. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Much more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Here with...
with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We're so glad you're spending part of your day with us today. I want to tell you about their courses that are taught at local universities. You can register, reserve your spot today. And the foundation, the Retirement Education Foundation, sponsors these great courses. You're welcome to attend. They're at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University, a one-day or a two-day course. That's up to you. Call today, 800-240-8981, or you can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org, and be sure to follow Retirement Education Foundation on Facebook. We spent quite a bit of time today talking about DIY projects. No, not the kind around your house, but the kind that involve retirement planning. And yes, a lot of people make retirement planning a do-it-yourself project. Now, Kirk and Paul, it's important to understand that there are some things that our listeners need to know, especially if they fall in that DIY camp and they're not sure they need a plan. What would you say to them today? You know, it's between the segments, Paul and I were talking and Paul said this to me. He said, if we have not convinced someone who is doing it themselves yet of why they need a plan and that they're not prepared to do this themselves. If people are listening to us right now and they're not convinced, that's exactly the person that's got to attend one of these courses. We want to go out there and shake you in your cars or wherever you're at and say, look, you know, you're, you're, you're making a $29 donation to charity. Just do yourself a favor and spend seven hours, get this 200 page textbook. And I, I'm very confident 90% of you after attending this course will begin to understand things you you don't know about yet. You, there's so many variables that you are so unprepared for. If you're not convinced yet, you better go to a class. And, and if you, it's exactly who this is for. Exactly. And at the end of the class, if you still think that you should be the one doing yourself, well, at least you have the information and the knowledge to actually maybe do it better than you were going to do it on, before the class. Without question, they will be far better prepared right. for doing it themselves if they choose to do it themselves after this class. Because I would ask all of them. We talked about this again in the segment, in between segments, Paul. If you think, if you're someone who thinks the returns on your investment is what's going to drive whether or not you outlive your money or not, then you're not prepared to do this yourself. Okay. That's, that's a fact because it's the sequence of returns. If you don't know what sequence of return risk is, two things. I would encourage you to go to retirementplanningedu.org. Go to the website. We've created an interactive calculator to show you the impact sequence of returns have on your retirement. And we've created a white paper to teach you about sequence of return risks. This is what's going to drive your performance in retirement. The sequence of your returns and when you take money from those accounts is what's going to drive it. If you don't realize the tax liabilities that you're going to have in your mid-70s, with all of the money that has to come out of your IRAs and 401ks that you're forced to take when you're 80 years old, it's 6%. If you don't realize your Social Security's taxable, a percentage of it is, you don't realize the tax liabilities you have in the future, and you don't realize that minimizing those taxes, Paul, will extend the life of their money. In other words, if you pay less per year in taxes, your money lasts longer for you. There are strategies to manage brackets. That has nothing to do with choosing investments. You think a do-it-yourselfer is going to understand how to manage that, when to Roth convert, when to use a DAF, when to use a CRAT, how to take the RMDs from which account. That's a whole different game. Right. If you don't know the cost of health care or long-term care and you've not planned for it, it's probably something you should probably know because if if you don't plan for it, has the potential of devastating your retirement, right? I, I love people who have that, the Medicare, somehow something right, happens right, 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 magical right, at 65 right, right. where Medicare is free. Right. Your health care is going to cost you 700 to to $1,000 a month right. when you're on, on Medicare. And the higher your adjusted gross income right. because of RMDs, right, right. money you have to take out, right. the more your Medicare costs. It's means tested. What, what about for the, sp- the surviving spouse? That's the one. Right. If, if, you've, if you don't understand the impact, if you're married, and you and and you don't understand the impact of the surviving spouse in terms of the financial as well as potential legacy issues. Again, huge, huge problem. Hold on, surviving spouse, ready? Yeah, I'm going to challenge every one of those do-it-yourselfers right now. Ask yourself, what happens when I die? 
So some of you are going to say, well, I know that my spouse is going to lose one of my two social securities, the lesser of my two social securities. So my spouse's income is going to go down some. You know that. Did you know that it, your spouse, your, your surviving spouse is going to pay more income taxes? Do you know that that surviving spouse goes from a married filing joint status to a single status filer and that the marginal tax rates are cut in half for a single filer, meaning your surviving spouse will have less income, more taxes, and some of yours, some of you who have resources, your Medicare's, their Medicare is going to go up too. By the way, all avoidable mistakes if you plan ahead. Right. What, what about mutual funds? Yeah. Do you know that your the average cost of an annu, uh, of an actively managed mutual funds between one and a half and two and a half percent, depending on which study you believe? What about RMDs from four hundred one ks and IRAs? Yeah. Oh, did you know that you can't take your RMDs from your IRAs to satisfy your four hundred one ks and how each one of your defined contribution plans needs a separate RMD? And the penalty is fifty percent if you do it wrong. Yeah. I mean, there's so many. I mean, Kirk. We're, we're lobbing back. And, here, we're lobbing right? back and forth. This is not a joke, right? No. We're, every single thing that was just discussed on its own is significant. Altogether, you know, these are things you have to learn, right? And it's the things, unfortunately, the majority of the financial service industry is not addressing or confronting or dealing with. And this is why the education is so important. That's why the nonprofit was founded 10 years ago, the charity to provide this type of education for those people within five to 10 years of retirement. It's a seven hour course. It's a 200 page textbook. And all you have to do, and we're streaming it because of COVID. You don't even have to go to any of the major universities. But if you want, you can go to U of M, EMU, MSU, Oakland. You can come to our learning center or you can stay in the comforts of your own home. And all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. That's it. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.